Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of Between Friends. I'm so glad you're joining me. You know, it's a week before the big holiday, and I imagine many of you are busy stitching. Your hoop is full, your sewing table or your studio probably has stacks of things finished and to do, if you're like me. And maybe you're under a little stress. I, I can relate, for sure. But today, we're going to talk about the fun that you can have with software. And actually, we kind of want to just have a good conversation with you and find out what's in your hoop, what are your top things that you're embroidering this holiday season, and we're you know, taking ideas for planning for 2022. And joining me today is Joanne Banco. So let's welcome in Joanne Banco of Let's Go, of Let's Go Sew. Hi, Joanne. <laughs> Hi, Eileen. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you all today. <laughs> it's great to have you here. You look adorable as oh, always. Oh, thank you. I, I have red cat. on, so <laughs> I don't yeah, have a lot of It's the holiday season, right? Yeah. So Sharon Crean, she just said she loves my outfit. Well, shall I tell you the truth? So this is just, you know, a T-shirt, a tunic. And my really cool cuffs were socks. Oh, my. Isn't that fun? <laughs> That's Isn't amazing. Fun? So I cut them off and put them on. And, oh, they're just, you know, I do a lot of demos with my hands under the camera. And I thought it would be really fun to oh my. have something yeah. neat like that. It looks so cute. Yeah. And, you know, these are the kind of socks, like, I, I'll see them in the store and I'll be like, oh, you know, I would like, I, I, I want to buy them and I want to wear them, but eh, I don't really wear stuff like this, you know, like, especially on my feet and what kind of shoes would be the right, you know, combo. <laughs> So this was a good solution, don't you think? Oh, what a perfect way to repurpose something for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so very fun. clever. Very clever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe well, maybe our friends have some stories of some crazy things they've done like that too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, Laurie Albrecht is she's flying the 10 needle this morning. She's finishing up Christmas PJs for the family and stitching oh. gnomes. Hey, that's awesome. Wow, that's really ambitious. Chris, uh, jammies for the whole family, right? Oh, you're not kidding. There's nothing more special, though, than than handcrafted yeah. pajamas, you know? I mean, because right. you just you feel so cozy when you wear them. And yeah, you know, it's, it's like wrapping somebody in a hug, right? It, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Oh. So, Joanne, what have you been working on? Well, I, you know, believe it or not, I mean, it's going to sound boring, but I'm kind of working on getting my sewing space geared up for next year. I know we're going to have a lot, a lot of live shows and a lot going on. And so uh -huh. I'm trying to get everything straightened up and set up. So we're good to go and ready to go live. That's <laughs> awesome. Listen, Laurie Albrecht, she's making nine pairs. The flannel pants are all finished. Wow. Wee. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and Ibby makes, uh, is making some book sleeves. Someone special is hoping for one. Oh, uh -huh. I hope they're not watching. I hope they're not watching. <laughs> and Betty Turner has, is working on a baby blanket and a blanket for her youngest great grandson. Great grandson. Wow. That is so special. I know. Yeah. Aww. And t shirts with applique. With patch attached from Don and trying to do your happy snowman uh, tile scene. Oh, that's a big endeavor for sure, right? Yeah, I had an ambitious goal that I'm ashamed to say I didn't meet. I was going to use um, the patch and applique software and create a whole bunch of those wonderful sewing patches that are built yeah. inside the the, oh. the software and send them to friends and cards. And I oh. just didn't, I'll have to pick, I'll have to make a new, a new holiday next year. And, and yeah. na, you know, national friends day. There's probably one of those and send it out then. Yeah, absolutely. Susan Weehy is making, using her dime exquisite thread to stitch in and need a good gingerbread house. Love that. Love that. That's oh. really nice. And a picnic set, uh, Marjorie Hurstberger. And a wall hanging for her daughter, a coasters, mug rug. Wow, everybody is so busy. You're not yeah, kidding. Awesome. My. Yeah. So let's I see. Hope Sharon they... Crean says, tell me more, Joanne, about those stitches. 
What, what stitches we are we talking about? What were we talking about? Oh, gee, we need a monitor. Yeah, maybe she meant the um, maybe she meant the the patches um, in the applique, yeah. patch and applique software. Right with the patches, that's what she just said. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, that yeah. is built built right into the software that we're going to be showing mm -hmm. a little bit of today. Maybe right. we can um, hold that idea for a for a future show. But yeah. um, they're they're built right in. They're easy to access. They're right there in the in the menu, and they're all pre made and pre designed for you to stitch out a circle with some uh, beautiful sewing related. <laughs> emblem or saying right on it. So they're really, really mm -hmm. nice for uh, clubs and, um, you know, quilt clubs and parties with your sewing friends. So, right. So Sharon Creighton says, what software? So Dime has a software called Patch and Applique Maker. And I'm about to show you that. But, you know, Joanne has six key points about software, why she thinks it really does up your software game, shall we say, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And number one that you think is if adding software to your embroidery studio or box of tools is like getting a new machine, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I'll say right off the bat, you know, I'm, I am a brother ambassador and I do use mm -hmm. brother machines and I would never tell anyone, you know, oh, keep your old stuff and don't, don't bother buying a new one. Yeah. But obviously we can't always do that. You know, maybe it's not in your budget. Maybe you're saving for it. You know, maybe, you know, maybe you just need to, to stick with what you have for a while. Well, software can be a really affordable way to add massive amounts of features mm -hmm. to your existing embroidery machine. I mean, so. you, you, you know, we get a little spoiled when we use top of the line machines, obviously full color screens, you know screens as big as an iPad and all the things that we can do on there. But there are many great machines out there with embroidery capability mm -hmm. that are in all other, you know, levels of the, mm -hmm. you know, of the budget for sure. And like I said, software really is not, you know, there's so many choices with software and the one we're going to show today um, just, you know, has so much built into it. Right. So for a, a relatively small amount of money, you can add that to your embroidery repertoire and do virtually all the things that you would be doing on that big screen machine. That's that right. Make sense? You know, and Joanne, you and I, when we started in this hobby, you know, the hoop was four by four. And we yep. wanted to do really big things. And uh, we did. And a lot of that was possible because of software. And I'm a firm believer in if you start with a machine that's a, limited to a five by seven hoop, you're a better embroiderer because you're forced to learn how to do multiple hoopings, how to split designs, where if you have that giant 10 and a half by 16 or a 200 by 400 for other brands, you know, whatever the big size is, you know, you just, you can put it all in that hoop. You don't really have to worry about all those embroidery skills, right, Joanne? Yeah, you are absolutely right. We both learned really, I would say, you know, the, the detailed way. I don't want to say hard because it was all fun. I never, I have never sat down and said, this is hard. It's always fun. Yeah. But we learned to do things, you know, the kind of the, you know, Taking, taking those extra details into account. And it really does, like you said, make you, um, yeah. it makes you understand the process even better. Right. And there, you know, there's a time and a place for every size hoop. Yeah. So, you know, you can do, a, I've used to always tell people, and I still do, you know, no matter what size hoop you have, yeah. you can embroider from here to the moon right. when you know how to properly, you know, link those designs together. And software gives you the potential for that as yeah. well. Jennifer Alexander says software, some software costs as much as a new machine. And of course, that, that can be a true statement because some embroidery machines cost as little as $500. But I'll tell you an interesting, and you may not know this, Jennifer, I don't know how long you've been an embroiderer, but uh, Dimes Perfect Embroidery Pro, which is our full digitizing program, is, you know, cost under $2,000 for someone to purchase. That very same software 
used to sell to commercial embroiderers only for $30,000. Yeah. I mean, that's how much it has come down. And it is exactly more feature rich today than it was 20 years ago. So even though we think, you know, yikes, it's a lot to spend on software. You know, it's worth every penny because of the freedom that it gives you um, that, and how you can grow with it. Unlike a machine, you know, you can't always grow with that same machine. And the Dime software is free for life. You only buy it one time because we're going to continue to update it for free for as long as you own the software. So that means like right now, Windows, everybody's updating to Windows 11, right? And it's free right now to those who own the Microsoft platform. But you know, in a year or two, when you're buying a new computer, you'll have to pay for Windows 11. On all of our software is always free updates for life for both Mac and PC. So, you know, it's worth it for sure. That, right? that is a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous benefit for, for mm -hmm. sure. And, you know, like you said, I mean, you, you know, the, the other thing, you know, with the dime software packages, you can grow up into what you, what you want. Right. You know, you've got right. a lot of different, a lot of different levels. So, yeah. I, so I'm, is, like I said, I've been a little partial to playing with the um, patch and applique maker software because yeah. it does coordinate with the, um, the the jean jacket collection that we just introduced. Right. So um, that's just making it extra, extra fun because of the, the combination that's, there and all the different um, possibilities. That's right. So um, some of our other points that we're going to hit on, and I'm just going to go through them real quick and then we're going to address each one. So software lets you actually see your design, what it looks like. And, and close up, which can be very important. You can use your software to view your design in a hoop, which is also helpful. You can prep and perfect that design before stitching. So it can, if you really, you know, get comfortable in software, you can eliminate much of the testing of designs that we often have to do because we're not really sure how it's going to stitch out, right? That's a big one, especially if you're editing your designs. I, you know, if you're you're making changes, uh, resizing or adding pieces and parts, mm -hmm. you, you know, the, the other the other great thing. I mean, there's so many things I could go on forever. But the other great thing is that within the software, you can actually watch it stitch out. So you can see, did I accidentally layer something mm. on top of something or underneath mm. something where it should have been, you know, stitched at a later point? Um, you know, that's a very, very important part. So when you think about it, software is really saving you money, <laughs> you know, because it's saving you from mistakes and errors mm -hmm. that could possibly cause that project to go in the circular file, you know, right, right. where it doesn't come back. So, and even if you don't ever want to digitize, you know, much of our software, the different My Lace Maker, Patch and Applique Maker, and so forth are loaded with built-in embroidery designs that allow you to manipulate them, you know, split them apart, you know, or just take the bird of, you know, a small element, say a bird that's in a, on a tree limb, you just take the bird out and get rid of the tree limb. You still have it, but you're going yeah. to use it separately. So um, it's a lot about manipulating designs and playing with it. And then so then there's another another point, though, just to that, you know, that you're you're actually gaining more design possibilities yeah. because you are able to yeah. extract those designs. Right, you're multiplying That's one of my your, favorite things to do. Yeah, you're and multiplying pull out a your, piece. Sorry. Exactly. Pull out a piece or a part that I that I like. I might like this, you know, little obscure yellow, yellow flower up at the top here. Uh -huh. And I might want to make a whole row of those on the edge of a pillowcase band. Right. Well, try to try to go find that design, you know, looking exactly like you you want it. But with software, you can just take that piece out, make a long string of it, and you know you're you're good to go and ready to sew. Right. And you know, there's alignment tools. So you know, to make that long string, you just select the first one, you repeat it, select them all, align them, you're done. Speaking of alignment, software allows you to print life size life size templates. My favorite thing yeah. to do, been right. doing this for many, many, many moons. Um, you know, if I wanted to put this on a sweater or anything, I've got the yeah. ability to, you know, if I want to try it on, I could try it on. Yeah. But with the um, the dime um, product, that uh, print and stick 
templates. All of my templates can be not only printable, but reusable. If you, I don't know if you, you can hear that little tacky sound on there. I think we I can take that, that yeah. and I could just, you know, position that right where I want it. I could move yeah. it around, try it on. And once I've got that positioned, I've got all the alignment points that I need to line that up with the hoop. And again, I'm good to go and ready to sew. So I, I don't know how I couldn't live without templates. I mean, that really, it would put such a crimp in my sewing style that I, I don't know what I would do. You know, it just, it saves yeah. you time. It saves you effort and it really allows you to achieve perfection. Absolutely. Patty Wilson has a funny comment. She says, putting the design in the size you'll be stitching is a huge help. Helps to avoid bad language. Hmm. She must be outside my office now and then. It's right? just fun. It's fun. You know, it's I like to print extra templates, even if I'm not sure what design I'm going to use. And, you know, use that kind of as a, uh, you know, like a like an art art like an artist would use pieces and parts and, and kind of make a collage and see what you'd like, like to, um, you know, make as a combination before you stitch it out. Huh. Sharon Dayton. Okay. She wants to know with the print and stick transfers, how do you know how to load it in the print printer? So the design is on the right side. Well, the design should print on the rough side of the paper. Yeah. Print and stick has a smooth, glossy side and a rough side. The rough side is the printable side. So on your printer, on the actual, you know, hard hardware, there is probably an icon that shows you right side up or right side down. And so follow that um, direction to know if you load it rough side, which is the right side, down or up. And if you're like me, you'll print it on the wrong side first, and then you'll go, oh, I'll flip it over and then print it. I have a little tip for that because I have two printers in the house and they both print opposite. One, yeah, you have to put everything do. in face up. The other one, you have to put everything in face down. Yeah. So yeah, I know there's an image in there where I'm like, oh, I can't even see it. I got to get my yeah. cheater glasses. So a lot of times what I will do is I'll take a piece of paper mm -hmm. and I'll put a very light X with a pencil on it. And I'll feed it through and then I'll see, you know, I'll just print a letter or yeah. something and see what what comes up. Paper's cheap. Right. So, you know, yeah. and then you can see, OK, which way did that did that go through? And then that's a good way to test it. Right. And I have put, you know, I've taped a little piece of paper on my printer, you know, RS up, RS down. So that that's helps. smart. Yeah. That's smart. <laughs> and let's see. Uh well, hey, we have somebody who just got a brother forger machine and learning how to use it, but can't wait to make something. Well, DP, we encourage you to just hoop anything, whether it's a piece of felt, an old terry cloth towel that's sitting in the garage, you know, as long as it's somewhat clean, hoop it up and stitch. Play with your machine. Yep. Just okay, get so started. we're gonna try to take a look in the software. Um We've been having a little bit of technical difficulty here, so I hope that you will bear with me while we try to do this. <laughs> and Joanne, maybe you'll tap dance for a moment. Yeah, that's right? fine. Okay. I'm reading some of these great comments too. The I know there's time. lots of great comments today, for sure. Um, hmm. Heidi's got a good tip. She said, "Use your label maker. That would be that would be a smart move to use a label maker and." Um, put that in your printer so you know which side is up. Okay, we're going to try that one more time. Okay. See how this works. Share the screen. There we go. All righty. Okay, so here is Patch and Applique Maker software. And in this software, you're going to find... Um, Joanne, if you've purchased Joanne Banco's Just Jackets collection, you will find that there. And I'm going to set it as the default setting in my software. So you don't know what I'm doing because sometimes I have to work behind the scenes here. And now everything you see on the screen is in Patch and Applique Maker. So here is the library of applique designs. And I am already 
Um, my the last collection that I was looking at was Joanne Banco's Just Jackets or Jean Jacket collection. So here you can see all of the beautiful embroidery designs that come in her collection. Use the scroll bar to go through them. And you'll notice there's three mini collections, right? There's the roses, the folk art, which was first. And then that last mini collection is the stars there at the bottom. Great job on that, Joanne. You'll also notice there's a patch, which means it's going to turn each of these into a freestanding patch. And, you know, that's kind of another lesson, right, Joanne? Yeah, that's a that's a fun technique, though. I'm working on some uh, scarves right now where I'm using that oh, technique. So great. So here I have two of her designs that uh, we chose to show. And one is the Rose 5. And what you are seeing right now is pretty much actual size. So that little yellow rose, I'm going to zoom in on that. That's actually small. It's only 50 millimeters, which is about two inches. It's about two inches. And um, so let's see. Joanne, to print yeah. a template... Mm -hmm. We can go up to uh, file and print. And when the screen comes up, uh, you can select all of your printers. But first, I'm going to go to print preview so you can check your settings. So as you can see, I have selected a crosshair, an actual size, and the artworks, also realistic and stitches. So if I didn't have a check mark in artwork and I click OK, then you'll notice that on my template, those words disappeared. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, you know, tell your, you know, keep a note of what you're actually printing, you would keep that in there. You can also do a header and you can do the color analysis. So you'll click OK. And then you have two pages. So here is our template page, and it has a um, the title of the design. It has the date, the scale, and you know all of those details. But also on the second page, it has the stitch stitching sequence. It tells you what color you should select. And as you can see, there's a little thumbnail next to each color telling you what it's going to stitch. So. You can opt to print that or not. I often do not print that. I just print out the template and then I leave my computer open and, you know, review the color sequence in my computer. Exactly. I was going to say the same thing. It's really nice um, and handy yeah. to have that in your in view. Right. And especially if you are using the print and stick target template paper. I don't want to waste that paper, you know, on that. I don't want to waste my expensive print and stick target template paper with a color sequence page. And, you know, I'm not going to remember to not print page two. So I just I just take that off the settings. Right. You know, right. while you're on those two roses, if you wanted me to, I could switch over to um, my machine screen and show okay. those, uh, those same two two flowers and give just a few more tips on that too. That'd be great. All right. Let me go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and switch cameras here. All right. Hopefully that one will come up. Click back on that. All right. So you can see I am at the machine and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just touch my little folder here where I have those designs already loaded. And here's what I want you to see, first of all. I've got three designs on there that look almost identical. The first one is, believe it or not, that tiny little rose. The second one is the larger rose that you showed. And then the third one is an applique version of that rose. You know, the, the uh, Just Jackets collection includes not just appliques, it also includes a lot of embroidery motifs. So, you can mix and match those together and you can create some really great textured looks. But this is a, a real example of where my machine at first, at first glance isn't really giving me all the information I need. And this is, you know, kind of typical. What we have to do is actually select that design and then, you know, view it in its larger form by previewing it. So I can do that. 
and I can actually see what it looks like in, let's say, the five by seven hoop. So that gives me a better idea of what that that size is. But if we looked at the the screen here, well, that those two roses look identical, but the first one was the big version. The second one was the smaller version. And I have to go through that same um, process. Go ahead, you know, in order to see that that design is much, much smaller. So, you know, yep, I've got the bells and whistles on the machine to be able to do that, but wasn't it a whole lot faster to preview that in software? You know, and then I don't have the ability to make a template here. Yes, again, we can, you know, if we go back into some of the, you know, the um, bigger, brighter <laughs> things that we can do with these machines, we could set that design and then select a uh, projector. But once again, when we do that, you know, we've still got some limitations because the projector has a certain size image area and it's not going to see that whole rose. A template is going to show me the entire rows exactly the way I want to stitch it, you know, placed on my on my garment. So Eileen, while we're talking about templates, I'm just going to slide my camera down, and I've got another another little little tip. Okay, I'm just going to tilt this down just a little bit here. Still using the same. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm just going to tell Jennifer Alexander, thank you so much for your comment. I'm going to look into that for sure um, and find out what that issue is. It'll take a little while, but I'll get with our tech team to find oh, out. Oh, the, 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 I saw that comment come through. Yeah. I figured you'd have an answer mm -hmm. for that. So just as you can see here, what I'm doing, I've got the, um, first of all, <laughs> let's do the, let's do the warning thing. I've got my beautiful dime hoop mat down on my surface here. And I want to show you something with the rotary cutter. So I am not going to do that with my yeah, definitely hoop don't mat. Do that. I'm going to roll it out of the way. Yeah. And I'm just going to place this down. And this is just kind of a nifty little trick that I've come up with, with when I'm doing, let me flip that light out. Okay. When I'm cutting templates, I could go ahead and you saw the one that I cut where I cut right around the template shape. It's stuck to my teacup. So, <laughs> but you can see I cut that one following the shape. And that's great when you really need, uh, you know, that, that, that whole motif so that you can um, position it really close to other things. But sometimes I actually like having the um, squared off version. Maybe I'm lining this up in the case of the jackets with um, a yoke edge. And if that yoke seam is straight, I'd like to have a straight edge on my paper somewhere that I could mm -hmm. line that up. Maybe I'm mm -hmm. using the center front. You know, you kind of get the picture. There are a lot of times in a garment we have squared off edges. So if I want to trim this template and keep it perfectly square, what I will do is I will put down my um, rotary cutting ruler and I'll actually, you know, get that line on my ruler lined up with the, um, the straight line on my, um, on my printed template. And then I went, I'm not going to cut it cause I don't have a lot of space here, but I would just take my rotary cutter then, and I would cut around that. So I would keep, keep doing that, you know, so I could get really, really close to those edges and have a squared off piece. So that's just my little trick. Think about using your rotary cutter and a ruler in order. See how I could I could position that so it's going to be right at the edge and then right at the edge there. And I could keep sliding that around. So I trim that template to a smaller size, but I'm keeping um, a squared off piece so that I can use that. That's awesome. Well, you know, I thought I would show our viewers how you can um, like audition these actual embroidery designs on a garment. So I can, I would have taken a photograph of my jacket. And when I do that, I actually have a, I keep a ruler here. Let's, let's do this one or the jacket back is probably great. So I take a photograph of my garment with a ruler in the field. You know, I just lay it right on top of the garment. And what that does is it gives me actual design, actual size. So in the, um, oops, it, ah! mm -hmm. um, 
in the in the backward in the backdrop tool, I can then do define horizon because maybe you didn't have a steady hand and take the photograph straight. And then you can also do define scale. And so this is when I'll zoom in so I can really see that ruler and I'll just drag the cursor. So I left click at the five and drag the cursor holding down the, the cursor and then let it go. And it's telling me it, it's close to reality. So I know I measured two inches. So I'll enter the number two, click OK. And then you can see that the image shrunk a little bit. So let's go ahead now and move. This is where you can really see the difference between the two sizes of a um, of those two designs, right? One was super tiny. The other one is, you know, a more realistic size for a jacket yoke. So I copied, pasted. Now I'm hitting my mirror image icon up here. And then remember those alignment tools I talked to you about? Well, I can select both and then click on align vertically, which really is horizontally, but that's another argument that I've lost in the company. <laughs> I can add different little elements as much as I want. If I like these little roses, I could put them in there or I could completely take them out. But the beauty of this is now when I go and I select this design and I want to go to print preview, I can see what that's going to look like. And it will print it in the orientation as it is on the screen. So in this case, that means it's going to split it over two pages. But if you're happy with that placement, you can select all of it rotate it 180 degrees and then print it and you'll be conserving your paper. There you go. Now you yep. have it all on one page. It's going to fit. You'll know when you get to the machine to hoop accordingly so that this embroidery design will fill the yoke in a horizontal fashion. And, you know, when in doubt, you can always undo, right? You can always go back and undo. And when you're working on a project where you're mixing a lot of embroidery designs like we are here, occasionally go to save as and save it as a new version. Just give it a new name, you know, Rose 12. And then you have a uh, version of it. You have not harmed your original design and you can play with this all day long. Isn't that fun? And it's so easy. It really is. I know, you know, I, I when I uh, I sent out an email uh, or a, a note to my email list telling everybody about the presentation that we were going to do today. And I said, you know, if you're familiar with software, I'm sure you're going to learn some new tips and tricks. If you're skittish about software, come and join us anyway, because you're going to see really how easy it is. I love the way, you know, you rest your mouse on any one of those icons and it automatically tells you exactly what it's going to do for you. Absolutely. And the beauty of, of, of playing in software, which happens to be our, our last point on that list, but the beauty of playing in software is you can't, you can't hurt anything. You That's can't right. hurt anything. You, you, can't know? Break it. you can't hurt it. Yep. It's yes, awesome. You can't break it. You can't break it. Yeah. It's you can great. play around with it and try yeah. all kinds of different things um, yeah. before you even stitch them out. And it, it really is, you know, you just keep playing yeah. with those buttons. And every time you touch one, you see what it does. And then you touch another one and see what that one does. And you just start mixing and matching all that together. So, Joanne, you're going to come back in January, right after the holiday. And we're going to dig into this a little bit more. We'll have our technology up to speed. As you can see, I'm working at home today. So, you know, I wasn't able to get it all together perfectly. But our program today is brought to us by the Embroidery Toolkit, Toolkit, which is on special. And that's the tool that's for embroiderers only. It has a uh, two centering rulers, centering target stick, target rulers, adhesive rulers, and it has the angle finder. For those of you who um, 
we need to determine exactly what the rotation is required so that your embroidery lands where you planned. So I hope that you'll have a very Merry Christmas and Joanne, thank you so much for joining me today. I hate to cut it short, but I we just have to do that today. I have an, an appointment that I must get to. So That's okay. I'll, 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 I will look forward to coming back and visiting with you and all of our friends here. So in the meantime, they can... Um, Think up some more questions and we'll think up some more answers and we'll have lots more to show um, after the first of the year. Absolutely. Thank you all for joining us and a very happy holiday season. Bye, everybody.